Hey there, welcome to DIY Projects with Pete. We're at the Backyard Ice Hockey Rink for the second year in a row, and I wanted to do a little overview of the rink expansion for year two, and then show some of the updates and upgrades to the rink. Now we had so much fun with this project last year, and a lot of people came out to enjoy the rink, so I decided to do it again, and to do the rink a little bit bigger this year. Now I wanna give a big shout out to Nice Rink. They're the supplier of the boards, the liner, and many of the accessories used to help maintain the rink. And uh, if you're looking to build your own rink, no matter how big or small, definitely check out their site at nicedrink.com. Please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you find it helpful. And let me know what you think of the rink, and if you have any ideas on how to improve it, comment below. All right, let's go ahead and check out how this hockey rink was built. Now here's a look at the area we'd leveled out for last year's rink. It was 44 by 88 feet, or about 3,900 square feet in total. And if you followed last year's build, we started off with a hill that had a six foot difference from one end to the other. So we excavated to get a flat area for the rink. If you're interested in checking out last year's video, you'll find the link in the description below. Since we're expanding this year's rink nearly double in size to 120 feet long by 60 feet wide, which comes to 7,800 square feet, I had eight dump truck loads of fill brought in to help build up one of the ends. I put a sign up in October when I saw trucks hauling dirt past my house, and by the end of the day, an excavating contractor stopped up at the house and told me I could have all the fill from the house they were excavating just up the road. My good friend Dayton with Jackson Utilities stopped over with a semi full of equipment he brought down from Titan Machinery of Great Falls, Montana. Dayton volunteered his whole weekend to help transport equipment and to run the machinery along with a couple other buddies. His company specializes in utilities installations in Montana and North Dakota where they operate heavy equipment on a daily basis, so he brought a good amount of experience to help the project go smoothly. We unloaded the case backhoe and skid steer and then took them up to the rink so we could get to work. We started out by digging into the high side to expand the rink, which is going to be 32 feet longer and 16 feet wider than last year's. We'll use the fill from this side to help bring up the far side to create a nice big platform that's a little larger than the actual rink. We started digging about 3 p.m. on a Saturday afternoon. Dayton ran the backhoe while Dustin primarily ran the skid steer. And both of these guys are on my men's hockey league team and make it over to play pickup hockey quite often. We worked until about 9.30 in the evening and then called it a day. The equipment helped move a lot of dirt quickly and we were able to get about a third of the dirt work done before we finished up for day one. The guys stopped over at 7 a.m. the next morning. We grabbed coffee and figured out a plan for the day. We had to be done by 4 p.m. so we could get to a hockey tournament that night and snow was forecasted to arrive around 6, so things had to be as level as we could possibly get everything in that time we had. We used the laser leveling tool to monitor how we were doing and marked high and low spots with either spray paint or wooden stakes. Then we got back to work and continued making the platform. Now I want to give a big thank you to Mick and the crew up at Titan Machinery of Great Falls, Montana for donating the case backhoe and skid steer to use to help make this new ice rink a reality. They found out about what we were working on and graciously let us use the equipment until everything was complete. Thank you so much, Titan Machinery. We needed a little more help, so our hockey buddy Mike came over with his son to run the backhoe for a while. Mike also helped out with driving the water truck later in this project. Now the majority of backyard rinks won't even need dirt work to be done if the slope from one end to the other is under around 12 inches in difference. The only reason mine requires so much work is because my property is in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains and the flattest area to do this had an 8 foot difference still from one end to the other over 120 feet. We feathered out the dirt around the ends to help it blend into the landscaping and got the platform level to plus or minus one to three inches across the entire area, which I was really happy with. We got it all completed before the weather rolled in, which was a bonus. And then, you know, next spring when we get some time and when the soil dries up, we'll run a Harley rake across the area to flatten it out even more and then we'll plant grass. 
Lastly, we did a quick test to see how the boards would sit around the corners, and things were looking pretty good, and we called it a day and headed out to our hockey league game. The snow fell overnight, and the next morning I got to work on the light post upgrades for this year. We used an auger attachment on the case skid steer to drill holes for sauna tubes that will be filled with concrete to create a foundation for the light posts. We're doing a total of six posts, one at each corner and one in the center of each side. We were able to drill all the holes and then pour all the concrete in an afternoon using an electric mixer. Nick, who plays right wing on my line, volunteered to help out with this part of the project. Since the weather turned so quickly after completing the dirt work, there were some minor dirt clumps and ruts I wanted to try and work out if I could. So I ran a box blade and the blade of the bucket over the ground to smooth it a bit more. And the temperatures during the build fluctuated quite a bit. So things would freeze, then they'd thaw, then they'd freeze again and it didn't ever really dry up before putting in the boards. We marked out the final rectangle for the rink with a string line and some stakes. We got a crew of helpers to get the boards up quickly and we used spray paint under the string line so we'd be able to line up the boards as straight as possible on the soil. The temps got to around 40 degrees and so we were essentially working in a big mud pit that day, which was a bit of a pain, but next year we won't have to worry about that since it's going to be grass. The boards are held in place with heavy duty black plastic brackets and the boards simply connect to each other with the slide in pegs on each end. It's super simple to put the boards together and one of my favorite things is that you can easily make your rink either larger or smaller simply by adding or removing boards. So if you decide to make a bigger rink after the first year, just order a few more boards or if for some reason you want to downsize, you'll just set some boards aside and use what you need. If you're looking for more in-depth tutorials about how to square up a rink or how to put up the boards, etc., you can check out Nice Rink's YouTube channel or website, which has detailed tutorials on all the processes. Put some board forward, put your bracket right there. Step that in. It took about three hours to get the boards up, and it was fun to have other local hockey players help out. Thanks a lot to Sean, Nick, Tim, Matt, Dustin, Dayton, and David for all your help. We had another big snowstorm before it was time to put the liner in, so I had to clear out the rink with a snowblower and a shovel before the liner could be installed. Dustin, Rich, and Matt volunteered to stop over after work to help get the liner in before the water truck came over the next morning. We rolled out the liner and we continued to get it to lay as flat as possible. And usually you'd want to do the liner immediately before you fill it with water, but I didn't have anyone to help out the next morning, so I had to do it the night before and just hope that the wind didn't come up too much. I'd recommend at least four people for a liner of this size, but last year's size was easily a two-person job. And here's a clip of last year's liner going up. I figured I'd include it since this year's footage wasn't very good since it was dark. My buddy Quinn and his family donated their water truck for use to help with the rink filling process so we could get this larger sized rink filled efficiently. A big shout out to their company, Williams Plumbing and Heating, as well as their civil construction division which provides services in Montana and North Dakota. We filled up the 4,000 gallon water truck at our city's water fill station. You basically hook up an input hose to the truck and start filling the tank. We got back up to the rink and prepared to start filling it. Mike volunteered his time to drive the truck and help with the process. He's no stranger to driving large trucks and semis as his company named Conveyable hauls aggregates for major infrastructure projects throughout the U.S. He actually played goalie for the University of Vermont's hockey team and he's been getting his son into hockey as well so they've been up skating on the rink quite a bit. We put the hose into the rink and started to release the water from the truck. It took about 30 minutes to release all the water using just gravity and not the pump on the truck. Now last year's rink was about half the size and I filled it up with a garden hose, but it took a couple days and I didn't want to put a lot of stress on my well pump again this year, which is why we opted to use a water truck. You'll want the liner to come up to the boards tightly and try your best to get any wrinkles and air pockets out of the liner before filling it with water. Now I should have had a couple more people over this morning to help pull out some of the wrinkles. Uh, luckily we were able to get them removed enough for water to still flow over them so it wasn't a big issue. But next year I'll have more help and we'll pay a little bit more attention to this part of the project.
We rolled up the hose and drained all the lines on the truck for the night and then got started the next morning with a couple more loads of water. Because we were able to get the rink area level within a few inches across the entire platform, we could get by with an average of about six inches of water over the liner. If you're interested in calculating the amount of water needed for your rink, Google Backyard Ice Rink Water Calculator and type in your dimensions. I'll link to this in the description as well. Here's a look at the rink once we're done filling it, and you can see a thin coat of ice is already forming. It's always a good thing to return anything you borrow in as good or better condition than when you found it. So we put in some extra fuel and then gave the truck a wash before getting it back to Williams Plumbing. The next step was to put the kick plates over the liner and boards. The kick plates protect the liner, give the inner boards a more professional look, and it's just a good surface for a puck to bounce off. The kick plates secure in place once you put the yellow bumpers over them. Britt and the pup came out the next morning to finish the rest of the kick plate and bumper installation, which took about a half hour. Once this was finished up, it was time to let Mother Nature do its work and wait for the ice to form. We got a light dusting of snow while it was freezing, but wasn't enough to cause any issues. It's been about four and a half days since we finished filling it and I'm feeling pretty confident we might be able to walk on it. So I'm gonna give it a try, wish me luck. So far so good. Doesn't feel too bad. The ice still needed some time before it was ready to be skated on, so I started working on the light posts. I cut four inch square tubing to four foot lengths and then welded it to a pre-cut and drilled steel plate I found at our local steel yard named Pacific Steel. After welding everything up, I cleaned up the steel and then sprayed them with a black spray paint. I attached each metal base to the concrete using half inch concrete anchors. The bolts ended up being pretty close to the edges of the concrete so I angled them in a bit and then actually drilled a couple more holes through the metal closer into the square tubing after this was filmed and used some additional concrete bolts. The next step was to lift and drop each 16 foot post in place. This took three people and we used a skid steer to help with the process, although I didn't get that on camera. Now starts the fun part of accessorizing the rink. I started by adding an outdoor speaker to two of the corner posts. They're powered by this mini amplifier that stayed out all winter long last year and it's been working great. Next, the shooter tutors get attached to the goals with a few bungees and they're great for practicing and they'll really help improve your shot. I strung 3 16 inch cable between the posts on each end of the rink that will hold the backstop netting so you don't lose so many pucks. I use uh, eye bolts and carabiners to help secure the cable and netting and then I did use a pulley on one end to make it easier to get the cable fairly tight. I hung the netting using carabiners and zip ties and then small round U-bolts secure the net at each end so that it doesn't slide in. Next, I welded up steel mounts for each new banner for the rink and then screwed them to each post. The Minnesota Wild are my favorite team, and then I've added a few other teams that friends and family like. So I have a Chicago Blackhawks and a Canadians banner as well so far. I also did a Montana State University Bobcats banner for our local hockey team. Next came the country flags. There's a U.S. flag. I have a Canadian flag for all our Canadian buddies who come out to skate a Norwegian one for my family's heritage, and then an Olympic and Montana flag. You'll want a few shovels to maintain the rink and the 48 inch wide snowplow shovels work awesome. You'll want a few smaller ones to lift snow around the edges as well. Uh, with four shovelers, we can clear off a thin layer of ice shavings or snow in about five minutes. 
I picked up a bunch of extra sticks and pairs of skates from my buddy John over at Play It Again Sports here in town, just so people don't have to go out and buy anything if they just want to learn or try skating or playing hockey. And this came in real handy for the last New Year's party, where we had 29 people out on the ice at midnight to ring in the new year. Now once the rink is all up, there is a lot of maintenance to keep the ice in tip-top shape and the rink looking good. I like to joke that my part-time job is a rink manager on a backyard hockey rink, as it does take a lot of time and uh, you have to enjoy doing the work. Uh, whenever it snows, I'll start by using a snowblower to get the majority of the snow off the rink. And then after snow blowing, I'll use a shovel to get anything the snowblower missed and I'll go around the edges to remove snow along the boards. The next step is to resurface the ice, and there are a lot of different resurfacers to try out, but I use a resurfacer that connects to a garden hose and disperses water evenly on the ice. You drag it back and forth, similar to a Zamboni, until you've gone over everything. And I'll often do a couple thin coats if the ice needs it. Once this is complete, the new coat of ice will freeze and you'll be able to get the nets back on for the next game or skating session. A lot of backyard rink builders will rig up their own DIY style Zambonis and a few friends gifted me with a tractor and some of the basics to get started with a Zamboni project for my birthday. Uh, it's a pretty retro looking little tractor but we'll see what we can do with it and I'll be documenting the build on the channel as I modify the setup and get it ready to use on the ice. One of the questions I get quite often is, why don't I build an even bigger rink or an NHL sized rink? And there's a number of reasons why I don't. Uh, the biggest has to do with maintenance. Maintaining a rink takes a lot of time and even last year's rink was a ton of work. We typically get a lot of snow and here are some of the shots of the rink after a snowstorm in February. As you can imagine, this took a while to clear off. Other reasons are the rink is perfect for three on three and four on four play and you'd be so tired if you skated back and forth on a full size rink. So this smaller rink works really well for backyard hockey. Other factors are cost, the amount of dirt work that needs to be done, the space you have to work with, and the amount of water uh, that's needed to fill the rink. I also get asked about the process of taking a rink down after the ice melts. So I thought I'd show last year's rink in late March. It started to melt and then after a few warm days, some of the water evaporated and then the rest just sat in the liner. So I began taking down the boards and then the water simply ran out the sides and went back into the earth. I have a hill it was able to drain down and it basically was all absorbed into the ground rather quickly. I filled a mason jar with some of the 2018-2019 water and I actually used it to start filling this year's rink as a fun little tradition that I'll keep on doing from one year to the next. I then pulled up the liner, uh, thought about making a giant slip and slide, which I probably should this spring. Um, and then I called it a season. I stacked everything in and uh, next to the shed. And I also did some puck hunting and found 91 pucks that have been shot out over the winter. There are so many positive things that have come out of building a backyard ice hockey rink including creating so many memories with family and friends, meeting other backyard rink builders and people in the local hockey community, and fun opportunities like having the Bobcat hockey team out to play some backyard hockey over their holiday break, and then having the Merrill boot and apparel brand fly out to do a story and video on the rink, which I'll link to in the description if you'd like to check it out. All right, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed checking out the process of how this backyard ice hockey rink was built. A big thanks to Nice Rink for helping make this project possible. And uh, if you're in the market to build a backyard ice hockey rink, I'd highly recommend checking out their backyard rink building system. I hope this video inspires you to build a backyard rink if you live in a cold weather climate. And uh, I'd love to hear what you think of the rink. Uh, please share in the comments below any thoughts or questions you have for me about the rink building process. Thanks again for watching and cheers from Montana. Okay, go, go, go! <laughs> Woo!
Okay, Dr. Robert.